Welcome to Exeter's Green Minute. I'm Dave Sharples, the Town Planner and Sustainability Officer for Exeter, New Hampshire. And we have put this video together to let you know what our land use boards and committees are up to to build a more sustainable and resilient future for our community. Happy Earth Day to everyone, and please sit back and enjoy while listening to our dedicated volunteers to hear the exciting things they are working on to make Exeter and our world a better place. Hi, I'm Andrew Koff, Chair of the Conservation Commission, and we have two main functions that keep Exeter green. First, we're stewards of Exeter's wetland and the wetland buffers, the area around the wetlands. And we have extensive wetlands in this town and surface water. We have the tidal river, freshwater rivers and streams, and they all have uh, building setback requirements. So we review proposed building projects and discuss potential impacts to wetlands and the wetland buffers and make recommendations to the planning board, often to help reduce uh, potential project impacts. Second part we do is land conservation and the management of town-owned conserved land. Approximately a third of the land within Exeter has some type of protected status. Of that, over half is town-owned or um, controlled through a conservation easement. So this spring, I'd encourage everyone to get outside to our local trails and waterways and enjoy some of the special areas that the town and the Conservation Commission has worked hard to conserve and manage. Henderson Swayze, Oaklands, those are the town forests, the Little River Conservation Area, Morset, Rains Farm, and there are others. We have more information and trail maps available on our Conservation Commission webpage. See you out there. We began as a tree team at the picnic table in my backyard in the summer of 2019. And that fall, we had our first Arbor Day at Lincoln Street School with a bunch of fourth graders. And soon after that, um, we qualified to be a Tree City USA town. Um, then we became a, a subcommittee of the Conservation Commission. So we were not working on the picnic table. And we now have a website. And soon after we began plans for some three memorial trees at Park Street Common, but then COVID hit and we all went to Zoom for everything we tried to do. But we still managed a second Arbor Day in 2020 at Lincoln Street School with a new tree, but sadly no kids in attendance. Our tree warden, Jay Perkins, who's been with us from day one and a terrific group of experts and tree lovers on this committee, will work to protect, educate, develop and expand our plans for the trees that continue to make Exeter beautiful. My name is Chris Weeks and I'm the chair of the Facility Advisory Committee. Our committee reviews the design, cost and construction aspects of the town's capital building projects. We bring a lot of professional experience with green building features, such as renewable energy generation, energy efficient systems and high performing building envelopes. To date, we have reviewed individual projects for a variety of factors, including sustainability. As we review building projects going forward, we will continue to sensibly push designers and contractors to use green materials, minimize environmental impact, maximize energy performance, and reduce fossil fuel emissions. This year, we will also be working on a facility condition assessment of the town's buildings. Our goal is to analyze existing facilities and prioritize future projects. Over time, we hope this study will help the town steadily improve the facilities which serve such a vital role in our community. Happy Earth Day to everyone from our team. Thank you. Hello, I'm Langdon Plummer, Chairman of the Exeter Planning Board, and I'm here to tell you what the Planning Board is doing to keep Exeter green. We ensure development meets the town wetland and wetland buffer rules and regulations. When we consider development cases, we receive written recommendations from the Conservation Commission. We promote the preservation and important natural features that include vernal pools, steep slopes, wildlife corridors, and habitat. The board promotes the protection of the town's surface water resources. For example, the Exeter Planning Board recently amended their stormwater regulations and are one of the few communities in New Hampshire that requires stormwater management systems have minimum removal efficiencies for common surface water contaminants. 
Overall, we try to limit sprawl development and encourage denser development in areas where the town infrastructure already exists to lower the financial burden on our taxpayers and lessen the impact on our precious natural resources. One way of accomplishing this, using the extra master plan, the board proposed and voters adopted an amendment to our zoning ordinance that encourages development within our downtown and Lincoln Street mixed use areas. This amendment also requires a portion of any residential units to remain affordable to support our local workforce. And that's it in a nutshell. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Chetna Palmer and I'm the chair of the Sustainability Advisory Committee at the town. So welcome. Um, so sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising, compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This definition is the most commonly quoted definition of sustainability, and it, and it is from our Common Future paper way back in 1987. So um, we can safely say that this is no longer future generations. It is, it is for the now generation. We are seeing effects of the climate crisis today all over the world, as well as here. So it is important that we take responsibility and act on our own environmental impacts. Sustainability cannot be seen as a standalone. It is a practice that impacts all businesses, individuals, towns, and cities. The Sustainability Advisory Committee is a town committee to be a resource and support to all departments to consider and adopt sustainability practices. The committee is an outreach for residents and to raise awareness of practical changes that can be adopted for sustainable living. Working with the interim sustainability coordinator, Dave Sharples, we have seen a UNH fellow complete greenhouse gas emission inventory for the municipal buildings. And this has led to Exeter residents recently voting um, in the town election, a, a resounding yes towards the installation of a solar array at the landfill site on Crossroad to offset some of the carbon emissions. With Earth Day, we can, we can all do our part. We can take action. We can use the composting bins that are provided at the transfer station and compost all of our organic produce that we no longer, we produce through cooking and so on. By doing so, we'll be reducing again, the greenhouse gas emissions from the landfill. Data has shown that over 30% of our waste to landfill is compostable. So this action alone will make sure that households use less of the single use blue plastic bags that end up in landfill. This initiative is through DPW and Exeter are joining many of our neighboring towns in this initiative. So please do, do your part and begin composting if you're not already doing so. Also working with DPW, we are encouraging all Exeter residents to do a litter pick in the month of April, leading up to Earth Day and beyond. So get together with your neighbors and friends to pick up some litter in your area. Litter is an eyesore and a health hazard. DPW is happy to provide the trash bags, gloves and high-vis jackets for this. They can be picked up from the DPW offices and the filled trash bags can be dropped off at the transfer station. So again, nice day, get out and pick up some litter. Litter eventually ends up in our rivers and oceans. And again, data has shown that people perception of towns and neighborhoods is greatly reduced when litter is seen on the roadsides. It encourages others to not bin the trash as well. It is not healthy and it is not environmental. So do your part. We all need to do our part. The system, the system advisory committee is here to help with sustainable um, initiatives. If residents have any ideas or projects that they would like to see, please do get in touch. And, and as always, it is really, really important to act local and think global because we have an impact not only on our immediate environments, but overall to what happens to our world. Thank you. Hi, I am Richard Huber, the current chairman of the River Advisory Committee. We have 11 members and we provide advice to the select board in matters relating to the management of the Exeter and Squamscott rivers, tributaries, watersheds within the town's boundaries, including flood control, public and private water supplies, land use, environmental habitat, recreation, public safety, and water quality. The major focus of the River Advisory Committee this year continues to be the pickpocket dam that was determined to be a high hazard dam. 
funding of the consultant contracts to study the pickpocket dam to determine options and costs to mitigate the hazards remains on hold due to continuing budget constraints. The River Advisory Committee will be attending to these and other ongoing programs with particular focus on informing the public of all the options related to addressing the pickpocket dam as they emerge and monitoring and supporting continuing improvements focused on reducing the nitrogen loading making its way into the Great Bay. In other news, it seems that the world is watching what goes on in Exeter. I would have you check out the latest, no, the January issue of Scientific American. And I would especially call your attention to page 22. 22, you see a picture of fish and a poem that has been transcribed on top of the photograph. Uh, this section of the uh, Scientific American is called Meter and edited by Deva Sorbel. But in this particular case, what he's featured is a poem. And the poem is Letter to 2050. And it's authored by Allison Hawthorne Deming, who is Regent Professor of Creative Writing at the University of Arizona. It's a poem. This poem begins, the Squamscott River grew lazy in early summer. This poem describes the removal of the Great Dam, the return of the alewife fish to their former spawning grounds, and the celebration of the Abenaki tribe who is celebrating the restoration of the river. Thanks to the voting public of Exeter, and happy Earth Day. I'm loving this green minute so far, aren't you? Go Exeter. My name is Renee and I'm chair of the Town Energy Committee. In a nutshell, our committee was formed three years ago to help Exeter reduce its energy consumption, increase its energy efficiency, and bottom line, save taxpayer dollars. Some of the bigger clean energy projects we've worked on are the LED streetlights and the landfill solar array. Both of these have a relatively short payback time and then you have miles and miles of savings and or income. And we're talking millions of dollars potentially. And that translates into our tax dollars. So thanks for your support at the ballot box. And also thanks for voting to create a sustainability officer. We now work directly with Dave Sharples to support him and it has given our committee a huge boost. Potential new projects involve an EV charging station near the on-ramp to 101. Speaking of that, the new Ford Mustang EUV has arrived in the Exeter showroom, and apparently it's like driving a rocket ship. Another long-term project we are working on is called Community Power Aggregation, whereby a town buys its own power. Aggregation just got passed into New Hampshire law last fall. Look for info on our page on the town website, which also has videos on weatherization, heat pumps, and more. Now, you know, students are concerned about climate change and we felt it was important to have their voice in our committee. So now it is my pleasure to introduce to you our new energy committee student liaison, Camille Weber, to wrap up this video. I'm Camille Weber and I'm the first ever student liaison to the Exeter Energy Committee. I go to Exeter High School and because of all the committees sharing what they are doing, I would love to highlight some things that the high school is doing to be more green. The SAU 16 facilities director, Rusty Lister, has told me all these things and I would like to thank him for that. We have a 100 kilowatt solar array now at the high school and you can see it on the left when you're going up Lou Hoff Drive. Also for lighting, many lights inside and outside have an each to an LED type, which is more energy efficient. Another way EHS is being more efficient with lighting is to shut off lights when they are not needed. At night, they are shut off at a specific time after the staff is done doing their work, so we are not using energy when it is not needed. As for new projects, I have one coming along right now to look into more solar energy at the high school. This is just an idea though at the moment. I have a passion for helping the environment, and this project makes me feel like I'm doing what I can in that sense. Climate change is very important to my generation, 
because changes that are or are not being made by people in power in this country will affect the youth greatly. I am very thankful that the Energy Committee has allowed youth voices to be on the committee because that way I and others to follow me can add our input about the work that Exeter is doing and hear all the things that adults are talking about on this committee. All of these committees are doing such good things to try and make Exeter a new place and I hope you are as inspired as I am by all their dedication. Thank you so much for tuning in to hear all about Exeter's committee work to become more environmentally conscious.